now. Welcome to another edition of Living Your Hope Live. I'm Joe Olson. So glad to have you with me tonight. Our second week in 2021. Some of you are already feeling like things are uh, starting to slip off the bubble a little bit. Don't worry. Tonight my teaching is called The Continual Work of Change. Tonight we also have a new report from KROS News. That'll be coming up in just a little bit. And then tonight we have Malin Jones doing a video called No Negativity. I want to welcome everyone back who's joined me in the lobby tonight at 7333 East 22nd Street. This is Living Hope Family Church. We meet here Wednesday nights. What happens here is we uh, we get together, we eat some food, we watch the show together, we discuss what we've just seen, we pray together. One of the goals of this show is to help people connect. Maybe you're thinking you would like to start a Bible study, some sort of a small group, some sort of a connection group. Use this show. You can meet with people, do the same thing we're doing in the lobby. Have some food, watch the show, talk, pray together, connect together, get involved in other people's lives. Right now with things that are going on in this world, this is how we're going to connect. I invite you to use this show for that very purpose. No charge. Well, if you've been watching the news, everything is so lighthearted. I think it's time for some serious questions. Hi, Siri. How's it going? Not too shabby. Oh, Thanks for asking. You're welcome. Hey, can I ask you some questions? Ask away. Siri, is a hot dog a sandwich? Interesting question. Siri, if all the world's a stage, where does the audience sit? I didn't get that. Siri, if a fork is made of gold, do we still call it silverware? I don't know how to respond to that. Siri, do pyromaniacs wear blazers? I don't have an answer for that. If money doesn't grow on trees, then why do banks have branches? Is there something else I can help with? Siri, why is there scented toilet paper? Hmm. Hey, what does cheese say when it gets its picture taken? Could you try again? If it's chilly out, does a goose get people bumps? I'm not sure I understand. If a deaf person goes to court, do they still call it a hearing? I don't know what that means. Hey Siri, tell me a joke. To the two criminals who stole my calendar. Uh-huh. I hope you both get six months. <laughs> <laughs> Siri, tell me another joke. What do you call someone who can sew really fast? What? Taylor Swift. <laughs> well, all right then. For those of you who have been asking or wondering, uh, my home is now COVID clear. We are all healthy and well. Sound the all clear, please. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers and concern. You know, I can tell just by looking at you, some of you have been extra good lately. You should get yourself a little something. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for KROS News. Integrity. Class. Experience. Insight. Principle. Excellence. Caring. Perspective. Man of the people. This is KROS News with I. Cheatham. Hi, we're on the air. Good evening, I'm I. Cheatham with KROS News. Scientists say they have detected a gas in the clouds of Venus that on Earth is produced by microbial life. The researchers have racked their brains trying to understand why this toxic gas, phosphine, is there in such quantities 
but they can't think of any geological or chemical explanation. The mystery raises the astonishing possibility that Venus, the planet that comes closest to Earth as it whizzes around the Sun, might have some kind of life. It's been thought that nothing could live on Venus. Its smooth volcanic plains are a scorching hellscape, hot enough to melt lead, where the temperatures exceed 800 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been suggested that this might be the best place to send all the career politicians. I'm I. Cheatham with KROS News. Stay tuned and reload. This has been KROS News with I. Cheatham. a good place for him. Hey, you know, I know you've been thinking about liking and subscribing tonight. Reach over and do that. Don't be like this guy. I don't like or subscribe. I just watch the show. No! <laughs> Luke, come sit on the couch. We will eat popcorn and drink grape soda and watch the show to get... Whatever. Let's go ahead and open the word tonight. It's been said that nothing improves a person's driving skills like the sudden discovery that your license is expired. You know, God is continually working in our lives. That means that there is always transformation and change taking place. If God is committed to changing me, it only seems right that I also be committed to the process of change. Tonight, I want to share a teaching called The Continual Work of Change. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The factor of change is fundamental and inescapable to the human experience. Somebody said, you can't change nature because change is nature. There's another saying, it says, you can never go home. Because my parents changed the lock. It simply means that things change. You'll never be able to go back and find things the same as they were. We're constantly confronted by change. When I moved back to Tucson just a couple of years ago, I had been gone for 25 years. I was amazed at how much had changed. That's happening outside right now, but it's less noticeable when it's happening gradually around us. It's happening in our culture. It's amazing how every decade seems to have its own personality and its own character. Our culture is in a constant state of flux and change. It's a full-time job to stay on top of what's in and what's out. And the moral fabric of our culture is in constant transformation as well. Most people over 35 years old have the opinion that they were born in a healthier moral culture than we have right now. Our circumstances certainly change. Just when you get comfortable and everything is just right, look out. If your happiness is dependent on your circumstances being just right, I can tell you you're going to be unhappy most of the time because things are always changing. What about our bodies? What can I say? There just comes a time when happy hour and nap time are actually the same thing. There comes a time when you should really leave your shirt on at the beach. There comes a time when getting out of bed is really just an inventory of what hurts. An older gentleman said, My minister told me that at my age I should be giving some thought to what he called the hereafter. I told him that I think about it many times a day. That's very wise, he said. I explain that it's not a matter of wisdom. It's when I open a drawer or a closet and ask myself, What am I hereafter? Christianity itself is about spiritual transformation and growth. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
Somebody said when children stop asking where they came from and start refusing to tell you where they're going, you know they're growing up. God is committed to us growing up spiritually. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. When God commits himself, he doesn't forget and lose interest in three weeks. He's going to complete that job. In the word of God, we are called to grow, change, and move forward in our spiritual progress. Listen to these scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. Our spiritual life is not a static experience where we just get our spiritual ticket punch and then sit around waiting for the train to leave. We're described as vines on a branch. We grow and we bear fruit. I'm grateful that I don't have to be the same Joe that I was in 1985 when I got saved. Change is a fundamental part of life. It's not part of the curse. Both in the physical and the spiritual realm, we see that change is essential to God's plan. God has made transformation a lifelong project for every one of us that continues right on into eternity. Let's talk secondly about the tendency to stop. One of the greatest challenges that we all face in our human nature is that desire we have to come to a stop. A small boy swallowed some coins and was taken to a hospital. When his grandmother telephoned to ask how he was, a nurse said, no change yet. <laughs> if we come to a stop in our life, we run the risk of having the same prognosis, no change. So let me ask you a question. If you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? Now, was your answer me? I don't mean me. I mean, did you say me? For, you know what I mean. Did you say it for you, for me, for me? We both want and fear change, right? We like the idea of change. Change has won entire political campaigns. We need change. Ask most people how they feel about change and the response is, oh, well, yes, of course, change is good. But in truth, what we really want is for everyone else and everything else to change, not necessarily us. Somebody said often we change jobs, friends, spouses instead of ourselves. We all recognize the need for change in our lives, but often we're looking to change ourselves only as a last and a desperate resort. Let's face it, we're all looking for the comfort zone. That's a wonderful place where we fit into our surroundings like a perfect puzzle piece. All is comfortable, all is well. The comfort zone is a place where we can stop moving and stop changing. Consider Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus grabs Peter, James, and John. He takes them up on this mountain. They're away from the demanding crowds. They're away from the bickering of the other disciples. They're away from the constant assaults of the religious leaders. Here are Moses and Elijah, for crying out loud, hanging out with them. Finally, Peter gets this bright idea. And in Matthew chapter 17, verse 4, Peter blurts out, Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He's like, I like it here. Let's stay. Let's build some memorials to this happy place in our lives, away from all those stretching experiences. We have a tendency to want to stop. We are by nature change resistant. Somebody said, if your religion doesn't change you, then you should change your religion. See, we're always moving. We're either moving forward or we're moving backwards. We're never really sitting still. No matter what we do, we are going to be changed both physically and spiritually. We might as well cooperate with God in the process and change for the better. To that end, Jesus gave us the warning of the wineskins. Luke chapter 5, verses 37 through 39. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine must be stored in new wineskins. 
but no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. The old is just fine, they say. A wineskin was essentially a leather pouch that was sealed with grape juice in it to ferment. The fermentation process caused that liquid to expand. New leather would stretch, old leather would split and burst. What that scripture is telling me is that those that are not open to change are not going to experience anything new from God. It says there no one puts new wine into old wineskins. No one does that. God says, I'm not doing that. It would destroy them and the thing that God is trying to do. It says for new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. Again, here is Jesus saying that we have this tendency to avoid change. But no one who drinks the old wine seems to want new wine. The old is just fine, they say. It is the danger of our living relationship with Christ becoming the same old, same old. Three preachers were discussing the question, if Jesus came back to earth, what church would he go to? The Episcopalian said he would go to the Episcopal church because of our line of apostolic succession. The Holiness said he would go to the Holiness church because of our enthusiasm. The Baptist said, of course he would go to the Baptist church. Why should he change after all these years? <laughs> While the truth does not change, the truth does always and continuously change me. If after all these years my Christianity is the same old thing, it's no longer transforming and changing me, then my heart has become like an old leather wineskin, stiff and inflexible. Let's talk lastly about being committed to change. A lifestyle of transformation is not a random thing. It is a path that we must commit ourselves to. Somebody said the ABCs of spiritual growth are adversity builds character. Sometimes we do some different things and we attribute it to change. We grow in a corner of our life and character where we're very comfortable and familiar and then comfort ourselves as being, oh, well, I'm open to change. Kind of like going into the gym and seeing that guy who only works the muscles in his upper body because that's what he's comfortable with. You want to yell, hey, what about your legs? Real change is us and God confronting those areas of our lives that we are totally uncomfortable admitting even exist and seeing them transformed. New life is not a comfortable process. We love to read 2 Corinthians 5.17 like it's this beautiful scripture. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away. Pass away, that means death. All things become new. Become new, that's birth. That hurts too. See, we don't by nature run towards those things that cause us pain. My friend Stuart once told me, people don't change until the pain of change is less than the pain of the same. So we need to ask ourselves the question, are we experiencing the pain of the same? The same old habits, the same old attitudes, the same old patterns, are they causing us pain? Israel refused to enter the promised land and become a people of faith rather than the murmuring horde that had left Egypt. So God allowed them 40 years of wandering through the same. Oh yeah, I've walked past that shrub before. Oh, hey, what's for dinner? Oh, sauteed manna over steamed manna. Sounds delicious. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. My friend Stuart also said, people don't move when they see the light. They move when they feel the heat. God will allow the same to become a more painful place to live than change in order to motivate us. I've had people tell me, uh, I've tried to change. I just can't do it. I don't think it can happen. Hey, even dead people change. We don't have to live this long, aching life of pain. In speaking of the children of Israel's wanderings in the desert, Paul told the Corinthians, these are all warning markers. There's danger in our history books written down so that we don't have to repeat their mistakes. We don't have to go through 40 years of the same in order to change. Instead, we can commit and cooperate with God to see change happen in us. There is a verse in the Bible that I would suggest you highlight in safety cone orange because it is a dangerous, dangerous prayer. Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. 
God, what needs to change in me? Man, that's a dangerous prayer. God goes right to work. Not everything at once, but a steady journey. Listen again to our text because it is a roadmap to change. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Let's break down what that's telling us. It says, take your everyday ordinary life and place it before God as an offering. We must uncompartmentalize our lives, realize that every corner of our common daily activity is where God wants to be involved. It also says embracing what God does for you, spoken in context of God's help to change and transform us. It says don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. In other words, deliberately setting ourselves aside to God makes change a much more natural process. It says fix your attention on God, living with an expectancy that God is about to speak. It says readily recognize what he wants for you. It's not really a mystery to know what God wants. It's in his word. He deals with us. It's in the locked closet in my heart that I want to ignore. It says quickly respond to it. The sooner we respond, the less painful the same will become. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. So don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given, complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, and generous love, each dimension fitting into and developing the others. Ultimately, spiritual change is not a process that we're capable of pulling off alone. Fortunately, if we take a few steps towards God, He does all the heavy lifting for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Change is an unavoidable and God-ordained part of life, both physical and spiritual. Change is a process that is painful and often avoided when it starts getting personal, but we don't have to go on living the same. Transformation is a process that we must commit to. We need to pray a dangerous prayer. We need to place our ordinary life before God. Embrace what God does for us. Don't become adjusted to our culture, but rather fix our attention on God, recognize what He wants, and quickly respond to it. Now the most important part of change is changing who's on the throne of our heart and who's the Lord of our life. If you're watching this tonight and you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, He died for you. He gave His life to pay for the sin that you and I have that is separating us from God, that is keeping us from eternity. You and I, if we will simply accept the gift of His life that was laid down for us, if we will repent of our sin and ask Him to be our Lord and Savior and begin to follow Him, we can know Him. He can make us an entirely different person. I'm going to say a simple prayer tonight. I believe if you will agree with me, God will honor that. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you died. I thank you that you rose again. God, we come before you. We confess that we're sinners. We ask, Lord, that that price that you paid would be paid for us. Lord, we ask that you would come into our heart and into our life. Lord, make yourself real to us. Lord, we want to walk in a relationship with you that will transform us to be more and more like Jesus Christ, that will change us from the inside out, God, from this day forward. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Christian, we don't have to be stuck. We just need to embrace the continual work of change. Now I have a treat for you tonight. This is a song by Malin Jones. It's a song called No Negativity. So much negativity all around me, but I'm not going to get no more. So much negativity. See you.
from the subjective yeah. But I see it from the sky, the objective I'm Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. Live in your hope. The Lord bless you. Scientists say they have detected a gas in the clouds in the clouds of Venus. Send in the clouds. Good. Is that what's going on with my face when I laugh? I go there. I'm kind of like a kind of clownish. I don't know what's going on. A little bit of gray showing on the side over there. Exceed 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Ah! exceed 800 did it again yeah. son of a gun <laughs> <laughs> it's been thought that <laughs> if we don't do and doing it again man yeah, yeah. snoozed <laughs> krs snoozed Hey now.